Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try to launch the Maya space plane into orbit, but that's going to be risky and probably won't work, I'll say. Uh, we'll have to refine that somewhat, I expect, but we'll see. Uh, but I decided to take a look at the Mark 1-3 command pod, since it's an alternative for the first EVA contract. And it's a tough alternative. It's going to have an unlock cost of 625,000. And now we have 184,000 unlock credit, but, you know, we don't have that much money sitting around. And so we're going to have to take a little bit of time waiting to get that. We do have the bump up in funds that will occur later on with the human orbital program. So we can expect more funds soon for this purpose, but we're not there yet. Uh, there are other alternatives. There's the Apollo command module. Uh, this takes more to unlock 735,000 and possibly because it's shiny its unit cost is way higher than the Mark 1 command pod even though their capability is roughly similar it seems uh, 9,000 for the Mark 1-3 command pod versus 32,000 for the Apollo command module we're not going to use the Apollo command module anyway um, it's possible that the Apollo command module is better suited for lunar re-entry compared to this, but they're the same mass on the same diameter, so it shouldn't make a difference as far as the sort of angle is concerned. Uh, we're talking about basically four tons on the same diameter either way. Well, a little bit less than four tons on the same diameter either way. And yeah, I, I don't see the benefit of the Apollo command module except that it's shiny. Uh, there is this TKSVA command module, and that's really cheap to unlock, even though it also has three crew. It might be more beneficial because it's lighter, so it's cheaper and lighter. It just looks really dinky. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's why it's cheaper. But basically, we don't have the money right now to do anything like that. I mean, I suppose Boss God must be around. Yeah. That doesn't allow EVA? I, do they have the little tunnel? Because, I mean, yeah, it mentions the airlock attachment, I guess. That must be around here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, pass on that. I think that's a little bit haphazard. So anyway, those are our possibilities, but they're very expensive possibilities. Actually, the Mark I cockpit, which we based the Maya spacecraft on, was the cheapest option for uh, EVA, you know, it was 195,000 to unlock and it allowed EVAs, and so it's a good deal in that respect, but it's hard to bring back down because it's not the right shape to be a capsule. Uh, so I was tempted to make the Maya spacecraft the right shape for a capsule, then we could dual purpose it. We could make it both a space, space plane cockpit and a capsule. But I decided to just stick to the size of the Mark 1 cockpit to be fair. Uh, otherwise it'd be cheating a little bit, I felt. Anyway, we're going to finish this. We keep getting data, especially from our Venus orbiters. And let's launch. Okay, just to orbit and back. Um, we have no particular purpose for this. I mean, uh, we have no contracts relevant to it. We have to watch out for our Mars window, but that's a while. I mean, not Mars window, Mars arrival, but that's a while away. SAS on, throttle is working, and ignition. And launch. Well, up it goes. Will those little fins at the bottom help? be enough. I mean RO is not as bad as stock with this sort of thing. But this is pushing it. We are past the speed of sound. We're not using much pitch authority so it's looking great. In real life wind gusts and all that would make this a very bad idea, but we don't have wind gusts in KSB. The boosters will actually, actually run out first, thankfully, because of the extended core. Uh, the g-forces are too high, though. We'll have to think about that. Okay, booster set. 
still too high. Okay, we actually want those engines to go. We'll have to switch off some of these probably. Okay, separation and ignition. Well, they're both on. How's the actuation? Not bad, a little bit of pitch. Again, they're sort of weirdly tilted through the center of mass, so... Speaking of which, since the core is tilted, I should probably pitch down more. That might have been throwing us off a bit. I don't know where it's actually controlling from during the rest of the launch, though. One reason to have the extra Delta V in here is for more ambitious missions. And also, I might eventually replace one of the fuel modules with a cargo V module. I'll have to see how much that would cost. We could just make it the same shape, just with a door. I'll just set it to the Mark II cargo bay cost, even though the Mark II cargo bay is bigger. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll cut it there and coast a bit and try to restart. RCS looking good. Okay, reignition. Oh, that was almost bad there. Unsettled. Okay, uh, that's good enough. Actually, I wanted a one and a half hour orbit. Okay, we have 550 meters per second extra in with the Hydrolox stage. And then also we have a separate OMS stage with these 3.6 kilonewton thrusters that's using the same propellant as the RCS, but that's supposed to allow us to deorbit even if both of these engines fail uh, or we used all the propellant or something. So, yep, that is an option. So it's a good little space plane if it can come down properly. Uh, but we would like to make sure that it can stay in orbit for a whole day. And so, but we don't have crew right now. Crew tends to take more power, I think. Or maybe it's just sun forward with a roll 180. Let's see force roll here. Didn't seem like forward was right, so we've got the weird situation of sun back with a roll 180, but all right. Tom's are pretty solid right now. Doesn't seem like there's a drop off at all. But yeah, I think the power situation is going to be substantially different with Kerbal's on. Okay. We'll deorbit this time. I'm going to try to deorbit with one engine just to see what the balance is, whether it's alright or not. This could be risky. I'm going to shut this one down. Uh, I wanted to test whether one engine would work out for us as far as balance or not, and we're going to find out. Okay, ignition. It, it can hold it. It can hold it. So that's good. We'll try zero periapsis. Oops, didn't want an extra ignition. Nope. Didn't shut that down for now. So about 154 degrees east and zero periapsis is what I'm doing. And now we will see what blows up. And the pitch will just be 40. And we need to get the solar panels in. Oh, we can't get the solar panels in. Oh, yes. Hmm. Well, hopefully they'll be protected by the wing. <laughs> Yes, I neglected that. But we're waiting for the fuel cells. We haven't gotten the fuel cells yet. We might have gotten the technology and I forgot to check up on that. But they'll also cost quite a lot. 
Okay, well, um, well, we we can check the center of mass here. Oh, there it is. It's not too far away from where it was before, so I think it'll be all right. We're at ten tons. I've once again made something that doesn't show up well at night, but at least we've got some lighter parts on it. Well, we're using quite a lot of pitch up, which means it's nose heavy right now. I'll uh, try and move some fuel back. But there's the limit. We already knew it was nose heavy. And we can't do this in general. That's why we put the canard to pull the center of lift forward. Well, it's really struggling now. We'll see what it does. We need a differently shaped wing. We'll, instead of a delta wing, we'll need more of a trapezoidal wing. I mean, I can't make the canard any bigger. Uh, the reason for the wing shape was to protect the jet engines, but we removed that. We don't have the jet engines. And we'll see whether the pods are at heat risk right now. These tanks aren't especially, you know, uh, tolerant to the heat or anything. The engine is getting heat though, even though I put the body flap. The bottom engine is protecting the top engine at the moment. So I don't know how we're going to protect the engine if the body flap isn't going to work. We might have to make a bigger body flap. There is the gap in the body flap, so that's a problem. The solar panels I don't care about. <laughs> we'll, <clears throat> we'll figure out some sort of alternative. We could just put the solar panels directly on top, maybe. Uh, the canards I do care about. These are space plane rated canards here. Um... We lost the engine, so now we're even more nose heavy. Uh, solar panel, nobody cares. The cabin itself is too hot. It seems like the cabin itself got too hot. Now that might be because we were pitching down too much, but it seemed like we were holding enough pitch. So yeah, the Mark One cockpit says it's rated for Leo re-entries, and we've got all the stats the same. It's got... Oh, I think they've changed it or something. That doesn't seem like the numbers that I had. Hmm. I guess they had a patch. They made the internal temperature 448, but the skin is 2273. So I had uh, 1000 and 2200, which isn't too far off. Right, it's 2273 and this is uh, 2200. The skin max temp is the important thing. The dinosaur cockpit's worse. I wonder how that survives. A slightly negative perigee is recommended. Well, we, we went to zero, so... Uh, so, yeah. I don't know why we blew up, basically. Um, uh, the one thing... I mean, maybe it's the heat being conducted, but then from the canards. The canards are space plane rated canards. We can't get better canards. Now, maybe we shouldn't have canards at all, and it was conducting too much heat to the part. And we'll reshape the wing to maybe try and get rid of the need for canards, but it's tough to get enough pitch authority. And yeah, they're supposed to be space plane rated. I mean, right? I mean, launcher seems fine, though. We can get it to orbit. It's the bringing it back down part that's the problem now. Well, that's always a problem. All right, so where do we go from here? I mean, it seems like what we can do is just wait for our Duna probe, I mean, the Mars probe, obviously, uh, to reach. We can complete this. We only have 4,500 left, and I don't want to go over time, so I'll complete that. But that doesn't allow us to unlock anything new. Okay, well, now there's a proficiency Maya spacecraft crew cabin, but that's not... Oh, maybe... Oh, uh, because I updated the mods, it got overwritten. Okay, let me restart the game 
and make sure it's under Proto Space Planes again because that was added to the uh, to the configuration that's part of RP1. I should really not do that, but uh, but it's all very messy. I'll have to re-add the Maya spacecraft in. Okay, now the Maya space plane cabin is part of Proto Space Planes as it should be. Uh, I'll have to try and figure out how to put that into a separate configuration instead of the one that will get overwritten. The syntax is rather complicated at the moment, so figure out exactly how to get that right. But anyway, uh, we will start training both Viola and Sebastian. And we'll, I guess we'll give Nancy the proficiency training. At the very least, still extend her career a little bit, hopefully. Something to do while we wait. We still are increasing funds. I think we're in the sweet spot for the crude orbit stuff. Well, no, we're not actually. Still a ways away on that. I guess it's not bad to wait. Let's just zoom to the Mars stuff. Okay, I've queued up the astronaut complex upgrade since we've got plenty of funds now. Hopefully it'll be alright. I suppose we should get the HM7. It doesn't have the 10 ignitions, but it does have better efficiency. Unlock cost is 50,000, which is not bad. What about the Mark I lander can? <laughs> I want to try I want to try the EVA with it. Effective space planes. Maybe maybe the prototype space planes are not effective <laughs> in that they blow up. I don't know. 700,000 to unlock that inline cockpit though and I don't even like the inline cockpit. Where's the regular Mark II cabin? Oh, uh, it's just a regular cockpit like that? Well, I don't know. It seems to have some heat tolerance. Why is it in efficient supersonic instead of a space plane? Hmm. I mean, these seem to be space plane configured maybe, but they don't say so. They've got the heat tolerance though. This doesn't have any more heat tolerance. Well... Maybe we should do all the flight stuff, since we're trying to do space planes anyway. And get to these Mark II parts. That's 300,000. Doesn't say you can't EVA out of it. But, well, I won't get that one just yet. We may have other needs. We'll see what we get from Mars. Oh, this is just a mid-course adjustment. We're not even reaching Mars yet. Gosh, it's got to take a while. Well, at least it looks like a green line back. Yeah, seems like great comms. But the line's got to be stretched a lot more than this, ultimately. We're only like this right now. Earth is going to go faster. And Mariska still gotta take a while to get to Mars. Uh, we're talking about 160 days. Earth will be over here. It's not the worst it could be, but it's much longer than this. Well, that seems a bit far out, doesn't it? I don't think that's what I was planning. Okay, well, let, let me just see with this pass how much it's gonna take to capture. Seems okay. Alright, but we're gonna mess that up by turning to the sun. And I'm not even gonna look at how messed up that is. Gonna shut down the avionics and add the SOI change. I mean, well, we could we could build we could change the shape of the wing and build one that can hold its pitch properly, but I, I'm not confident that we're going to have one that's going to survive right now. 
maybe I'll make a bigger wing so that it gets more drag so it can cool down quicker. I'll try and make... I mean, maybe making the body flap a single big piece would be good, but... I'm gonna limit the gimbal of the bottom engine, maybe. Just in case it's hitting the body flap. Oh, well, they're both limited right now. And I'll make the body flap larger. Even though that's gonna mess up the center of lift. It's not too bad, that's the empty center of lift. The solar panels will move a bit. It seemed like just the forward ones had a problem. Yeah, I mean, if we had to abort, we'd have to not have all this fuel in the back. Definitely drain the back tank first. Okay, we'll try it with this wing. Okay, so I've got the Maya with its new wing on top of our launcher. The Deneb A3, A4 actually, A4. And I've action grouped these engines now so four of the outer four of them will turn off but that leaves the center one burning for quite a long time um, but we've got a total burn time of just about well just under three minutes so it's two minutes and 55 seconds and it can burn for three minutes and 25 so maybe it'll be all right but we'll have to see we do get to dump the boosters of course but I guess pretty high in the thrust weight ratio even at booster set so maybe we would be fine with just three boosters like we've had you know like an a3 now, that leaves us with only three fins though <laughs> so that's a rub technically with this even two boosters is enough mass for the pad it doesn't even cut down on the thrust weight ratio that much, so forget it. Alright, well, we don't have anything better to do. Let's uh, build one of these. We have Max Mass Spectrometer 3. And the full Lithium Hydroxide Scrubber. Okay, well, I didn't think we would be trying this twice in the same episode, but we're trying it twice in the same episode. Just because it's taking so long for our Mars mission to get there. I hope it's still got comms. Let's see. Yeah, it's still green right now. Okay. There's hope. Here we go. Oh, no. Do not put the Kerbals in. <laughs> They're ready to go. But we're not ready to put them in there. Alright. Here we go. SAS on. Throttle up. Ignition. Launch. We are past the speed of sound. Oh, we lost one on the boosters. I guess that helps. <laughs> I'm going to turn off the four. Oh. That action group doesn't work. I wonder what happened. I must have undid something. I just gotta turn off the floor, but you now that doesn't work. No, there. Now if I just shut down some. Okay, now only the center one's running. Yeah, I. Had action group did but I think I had to undo something and that undid the action group. Let's see if this can last. It should. I think there's because of the haphazard way I shut off the engines is within its burn time. Okay, separation. using a fair bit of pitch authority right now. I think it's using more than it was before. 
must have displaced some something. Because of the booster going out early, we have a lot less surplus. We will be able to get to orbit, but we, but we do have a lot less surplus. Still accumulating data units. All right. Well, we are in orbit, but I would like it to be a one and a half hour orbit, so we will proceed to apoapsis. Maybe we should just have this be a one orbit test. And not extend the solar panels just to see what effect that has. I don't know how we were ending up as far as our trajectory is concerned, but I do intend to try a more negative trajectory. Okay, well that's close enough to one and a half hours. We'll be practically done with the Hydrolox fuel. We're not that heavy and we have a big wing. So in theory we have a lot of drag. Well where we land doesn't matter too much right now. We just want to make sure that it survives through the hot part. So about 175 degrees east we are going to deorbit. I'll start now to make it sort of average. Oh we lost one engine. Well we tested that scenario. We actually lost one engine this time. Okay, negative 40 kilometers. All right, we'll see how it does. The Hydrolox tanks are basically empty. Okay, still using a bit of up pitch here at 100 kilometers. I'll move what little fuel we can back. But uh, it's still using plenty. And maxed out. But we've got a bigger wing now, maybe we'll slow down sooner. We are approaching South America. Could overshoot, it depends on how much lift we get. Holding just above 30 degrees with all this. Oh, a little bit of overheating on that bottom engine again. Not that bad though, it's better than last time. That's the cabin that's overheating there. Oh, that heat accumulation there. Yeah, ultimately, it looks like we're going to have to come down steeper. I mean, this time was better, but it wasn't good enough. Um, it's much steeper on the re-entry than I have any reason to expect it to be. Uh, I mean, we also need to reshape the wing even more because, again, it's having trouble holding the pitch up, that would help. May I need to add some lead weights to it somehow. <laughs> of course it was originally designed with those jet engines in the back and that helped the balance, so we may need to put some extra weight in the back somehow. Something useful would be nice instead of lead weights, but all right. I think that's enough excitement for one episode. So we'll have the arrival of our Mars mission at Mars in the next episode and hopefully that'll go all right and we'll see what else we can do. I think I'll probably edit the Maya spacecraft a little bit more and we'll try it again. It did improve this time so that gives us hope but the tolerances are tough. We will see. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.